want us to think about a time when we were in school, when we were younger, and we were working on something or engaged with something that really resonated with us, really struck us and stayed with us until this day. I'll share a story of mine. I grew up about an hour from here in a small town, rural community. When I was in the 11th grade, we had a new English teacher come. He was from Colorado. He was different. He was cool. We're all enamored with him. And he gave us this assignment to write about the worst day of our lives. Now, I avoided this for as long as I possibly could. And then finally, the day before it was due, I sat down and I just wrote nonstop, no edits, no rewrites. I just let it flow. I wrote about when my father died when I was a little girl, about my sadness, my confusion, that I was afraid of his closet. Death be a really strange thing to a seven-year-old. I just let it flow. And about a week or so later, he kept me after class and he said, your story really moved me, like the vulnerability and the imagery of it. And I, when I think about that experience, what it reminds me of is that he really gave me the opportunity to engage in something real in my life. It caused me to reflect and to express things I had clearly been carrying around for a long time. It really shaped me. I went on to value storytelling and to get a degree in journalism eventually and value story to this day. It's, it's kind of how I see people as a collection of their stories. Now I want us to all think about a time when we were younger, when we had an experience that really engaged us in or connected us to the environment. For some people, that's easy. But for many of us, it's hard. We didn't grow up with this real experience that fostered stewardship or helped us see that we were part of this bigger ecosystem and that how we interacted with it mattered. We're kind of disconnected. But what if we are to emotionally and intellectually connect to an environmental issue to make it real? Well, environmental issues can be kind of complex, so I like to start with food. We all eat. It's how we share our cultures. It's how we come together. Would it surprise you to know that every year in the United States, 40% of the food that is grown or produced is wasted? like $230 billion worth of food is uneaten, while one in six people are food insecure. Now that waste contributes to 10% of greenhouse gas emissions that cause climate change. Such a growing and significant number that the United Nations has identified food waste as a major target for climate action. And what's important about this is nearly 40% of that waste comes from us and our own homes. We're the biggest generator. But we're very disconnected from our food systems and from the economic, social, and environmental issues related to food waste. It's not part of our daily lives. Let me show you what it looks like when we connect this issue to the students that we work with annually. Now, our education team at Clean Memphis has really the joy of working with nearly 10,000 students annually. And they take these sort of abstract global environmental concepts and they bring them home to life here in our city, in our community, in our schools. Now, when we're talking about food, we begin with where our food comes from and how it moves through the system, the issue of food access, and the problem of food waste. Now, armed with this information, our students host food waste audits, which means that over a few day period, they literally sort and weigh and measure food and milk that's not eaten, that's wasted. They also survey students to gain a better understanding of why they didn't eat something. Now we work with them to compile this research and give it back to the district or whatever school we're working with. And there's really some positive outcomes from this process and from this work. Teachers and cafeteria staff are being retrained on what students have to take versus what they want. Menu items are being substituted based on student choice and preference and their feedback. 
and my favorite, the establishment of share tables, where when students take whole fruits or packaged food and decide they don't want them, they were being thrown away, now they move to a share table so that other students can take them or they can be moved to after school programming or taken home by a student or family that may need that. And students are also creating their own campaigns around the value of food and why it shouldn't be wasted. Now what we see when we're working with kids is that when you engage them in something real in their life, they are better able to see themselves as part of this bigger system and recognize their own agency to make change. Now we know environmental education is having a positive impact on our students. They're enthusiastic about learning, their attendance is better, and they're better grasping the concepts that we're working on. But now we have even more evidence that environmental education is powerful. Stanford University recently released a study where they evaluated over 119 peer-reviewed studies over a 20-year period about the power of environmental education. And what this study, the study showed is that students involved in environmental education have improved critical thinking skills, problem solving, self-esteem, civic engagement, and it helps shape their values long-term. This is powerful evidence of the value of environmental education. Now, far too often, though, environmental education is relegated to the sidelines. It's a unit or lesson taught once a year, rather than being the foundational lens with which all other topics or subjects can be viewed. And this is a missed opportunity because schools provide the perfect laboratory for exploring real world issues. That's why we advocate so strongly for environmental education and why we advocate for an environmental IQ. Our students need to understand the foundational connection they have to the environment. They are the next innovators, policy makers, and CEOs, and they deserve the opportunity to have the connection and knowledge to shape a better future. Now, what about us as individuals, as adults? You know, we could share four or five things that we can do to have a better impact on the environment, but you can get that stuff online. What I'm suggesting is that we start at the beginning with a shift in consciousness and an understanding that we are part of a system that is interconnected and how we interact within that system matters. Our, our ancestors understood this. They understood their connection to and reliance on the environment. There's nods to it in most all cultures significant amount of references to it in Native American and African cultures. Their connection to the environment was real. It was part of their daily lives, and in many ways, it was like a religious experience. Their very lives depended on it, as does ours. And that fundamental knowledge can help shape our actions and decisions moving forward. There are complex environmental problems, for sure, that require policy, transformation of industry, and real environmental justice. But like our students, if we can connect with what's right in front of us, what's real in our lives, what's within our reach, and allow the awareness of our connection to this larger system to help shape our actions and decisions, then we can begin to build a better, safer planet for us and for them. Thank you.